By age two, children begin to show genuine empathy towards others. They not only read and adjust their own responses to others' emotions, they try to make others, even their dolls and stuffed animals, feel better. Young children are remarkably perceptive. Even two-year-olds understand that people have inner experiences of perceiving, feeling, and desiring. They realize that they will feel good if they get what they want, and bad if they do not. Children's emotional and cognitive development support each other. Certain emotional understandings and capacities are beyond their reach until they have reached certain levels of cognitive maturity. By the middle of the second year, toddlers may actively attempt to avoid or ignore emotionally arousing situations. They begin to engage in encouraging or reassuring self-talk, and to change or substitute goals that are less frustrating. These are the beginnings of the sophisticated behavior strategies needed for managing emotions. Late in the second year and during the third year, young children begin to call themselves by name, to use I and my, and to assert their new feelings of competence and independence by insisting on doing it myself. This emerging self-consciousness is accompanied by emotions such as pride, guilt, shame, and embarrassment. Can you take the lid off? These emotions are related to young children's ability to see themselves as objects that are observed and evaluated by others. As they begin to understand behavioral standards, they use those standards to evaluate and modify their own actions. Regulation of emotions is perhaps the most challenging aspect of emotional development. It requires the ability to put an understanding of emotions to work in real-life contexts that can be frustrating. Upsetting or embarrassing, even positive emotions require regulation. It is okay to be noisy and exuberant on the playground, but not at snack time. Say bye to all your friends. Bye. In typical circumstances, young children are faced with a variety of emotional demands. The support of their caregivers helps them understand and manage these demands. Parents who discuss emotions more frequently and elaborate on emotional experiences tend to have children with more accurate and elaborate understandings of emotion. Research indicates that such conversations are very important. Parents also help their children understand that how I feel is not necessarily the same as how you feel. A growing awareness of other people is an essential building block of social understanding. When adults draw children's attention to another's distress and explain the causes of that person's feelings, children learn the meaning of empathy. When the emotional climate of a home is characterized by instability, dysfunction, conflict, or abuse, young children are confronted with conflicting, confusing, and sometimes overwhelming emotional demands. To make matters worse, they're often deprived of the parent as a resource for managing these powerful emotions. These are the children who are more likely to experience difficulties regulating their emotions. A small but significant minority will develop emotional disorders of their own. What has not been appreciated until recently is that these disorders can be apparent in infancy and early childhood. Young children who are growing up with a parent with an emotional disorder are themselves at risk for depression or other emotional disturbances. Children who learn to manage their emotions constructively have an easier time with the disappointments, frustrations, and hurt feelings that are so prevalent when they're young. They also have an easier time relating to others. Acquiring the capacity to regulate emotions helps children believe that emotions are manageable, controllable, and can be appropriately mobilized and expressed. This is the opposite of believing that feelings are overwhelming, undermining, or disorganizing. Children who do not feel in control of their emotions are more prone to outbursts and inattention. They are more likely to retreat rapidly from stressful situations. The capacity for self-regulation is a critical part of learning to comply with both external and internalized standards of conduct.